Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 5 of Unix and this is a very small module so we will be doing it very quickly and if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, so let's get started with the um, module 5 and after the uh, topic we will be discussing the previous questions but actually the only the first question is uh, relevant from our module other questions have been changed in 2018 scheme. So this I have discussed in the I guess in the module 4 or module 3 so I will be confirming it and let you know and uh, for now let's uh, start with the module first topic is about signals okay what's a signal signal means it's a software interrupt means when a process is performing some uh, task here at that time any interrupt comes that's known as a signal okay like for example alarm size limit window chain etc okay so three types of um, uh, three option there are three options for the process to handle a signal like uh, default option is to terminate the process and the second one is to ignore the signal and the third one is to invoke user defined functions okay so i'll be discussing each of these in uh, the upcoming topics in some detail okay and what's a uh, what's the unix kernel support for signals okay it has a uh, flag uh, table slot for keeping the track of the process and it has the track of the signal pending and it has stats of the previous signals also it has the possible options for each signal and much more okay and what is signal masking suppose that there was a parent process here at some point of time and now it's uh, going to terminate so what it will do is it will create a duplicate uh, copy um, it will create a duplicate copy of itself and mask the um, pending signals it has on the uh, newly created copy okay that's known as signal masking and the sig action means uh, using the api to block the um, any, uh, any more upcoming signals and the sick child and the wait API sick child is generated when a child process terminates based on how parent handles the sick child uh, signals the different events may occur like the first one is the default action here the sick child uh, does not terminate the parent process but the kernel will clear the slot for the child process and it will um, the parent process will call the wait PID for the API so that the child process can complete the execution okay. The second option for the parent is to ignore the sick child so here the sick child will not be discarded but the child process will be cleared and minus one will be returned by the kernel to the parent process okay and the last option is to allow the sick child to execute its functions and based on the parent setup the api may or may not be aborted okay and uh, if you have um, at some time in the um, execution what happened is there was a mask here at that time you uh, forgot to um, save that mask so what uh, we can do is we can use a six set jump to mark that mask and after that at any other point of time if you want to start the execution from here we can use the uh, long jump functions to start the execution from the marked point okay marking will be done by the set uh, jmp function and to start from that point we will be using the long jmp function okay and if I, if there are two processes like p1 and p2 and if the uh, p1 process wants to uh, terminate the p2 process it can uh, send the uh, signal through the uh, kill api okay and alarm means if after a certain amount of time there is some signal to be sent we can use alarm and if we have the multiple signals here to be sent or any other task to be performed we can use the interval timers and in that we have the post 6 uh, b timer which is a more flexible and powerful uh, timer than the unix because it has the multiple independent timers per system clock and the timer is uh, the resolution is in nanoseconds and the timer interval may be absolute or relative okay and uh, the next one is the daemon process which is the which is the disk and execution monitor it's basically a background service for handling various functions some of the features are like it's uh, having the super user privilege and the group leader and it can call and fork the parent process it can handle new sessions io files and the masking operations okay and the daemon error logging facility includes to display the error messages on the console and if the system is in remote we can use the tcp ip protocol to access that system and uh, show the error messages in that console okay and the important thing is that at a particular amount of time only one daemon can function okay for that we will be using the uh, user file locking for achieving the synchronization okay and some of the conventions are like uh, it's stored in var slash run file and it has uh, the extension of .pid and it started from the command line okay and uh, what it does is it uh, when it uh, start any process at that time it will read the configuration file and at any um, if at a later point of time uh, the configuration file changes it will not know so what we can use is sighub 
what it will do is whenever the configuration file changes it will send the signal okay so that it will restart the uh, program and uh, read the new configuration file and execute the program okay and what uh, client server model does is that uh, the server is a system here and the client is also a system here okay and uh, the server uh, wants the request of the client like um, the client will request some uh, function so the server will perform and uh, return the result and this process can be uh, done in a more efficient and improved manner using the daemon functions okay so yeah that's uh, pretty much it about the module 5 of unix and if you have any doubt you can uh, mail me at my email which i have provided in about and that's it and thank you for watching see you in the next one